Good morning students. So today in chapter number 4 we will start from monitoring the atmosphere. So why it is essential to monitor the atmosphere? Because atmosphere is consists of many gases. These gases are very much essential for living organism to survive. So monitoring this atmosphere is essential to ensure the environment does not undergo further degradation. So there are some uses of this monitoring program. These are uh, important for research purpose, for evaluating the impact of hazards due to accidental release of chemicals. I think you all may have heard a few days ago on May 7, a toxic gas leak tragedy in Vizac, right? Which killed people as well as harm our atmosphere also. So there are different types of stations whose purpose is to monitor the atmosphere in different places. So there are five main characteristics of ambient air sampling. Number one is collection efficiency, sample stability, recovery, minimal interference and understanding the mechanism of collection. The first three need to be 100% efficient. And the sample must be large enough for accurate analysis. Pollutants must not be altered or modified during collection. The sample must be stable. That means there should not be any physical or chemical change. So there are some techniques to collect these samples. Some techniques are very simple whereas others are sophisticated and expensive. These techniques can be broadly divided into two groups, that is manual technique and instrumental technique. Manual technique provides limited information, whereas instrumental technique is more efficient. High volume sampler technique is commonly used for collecting samples for particulate matter. Here, the sampler forces a large quantity of air through a filter. Then the filter is weighed before and after the sampling. The difference in weight of the filter gives the estimation of particulate matter collected. Because of the high flow rate, large quantities of particles ranging from 0.1 to 1 gram are collected over a typical 24 hour sampling period. Next is bubbler technique which is very easy. So in this technique, air is bubbled through a solution which absorb or react with the pollutant. So most gases can be collected by dissolving them in the liquid and analyzing the liquid. Next is instrumental technique which generate huge amount of data but may be difficult to analyze. So the first one is photometric technique. First of all photo means light. So in this technique a sample of dust in the form of gas are collected and mixed with reagent and pass through a photometric device. Then photometry uses the absorption of infrared ultraviolet radiations by the gases as a measuring effect. Gases absorb energy in certain wavelength. So the fall in radiation intensity is a direct measure of the dust concentration. So by this technique almost all gaseous air pollutants can be measured by continuous monitors. Next is non-dispersive infrared. This device can be used to monitor those gases which emit infrared radiations like sulfur dioxide, oxides of nitrogen, carbon dioxide and hydrocarbon. As we know, too much exposure to infrared radiations lead to damage of eyes and skin. On a global scale, trapped infrared radiation contributes to global warming also. It is commonly used for monitoring carbon monoxide. Next is chemiluminescence. Chemiluminescence is basically a reaction that produces light. And this technique is used for detecting oxides of nitrogen which may be present in very small amount. When nitric oxide molecules react with ozone, it forms nitrogen dioxide in its excited state. A small fraction of these molecules decay by emitting photons and mixes with ozone, light is given off. So the amount of light emitted gives measure of the concentration of nitric oxide present in the sample. 